Gamers generally know what 60 FPS feels and looks like, but what about 25 milliseconds of system latency? Before the release of the NVIDIA Reflex Analyzer, gamers weren't able to easily measure system latency, the time it takes your actions to end up as pixels on screen. Even now, gamers don't often get to experience various levels of latency and how different they can feel. That's why we teamed up with the Meta and their popular aim trainer Kovacs to give everyone a chance to jump in and feel the difference between high and low latency. We call it the System Latency Challenge. The challenge was conducted at three latency levels, 85 milliseconds, 55 milliseconds, and 25 milliseconds. First up was 85 milliseconds, which is similar to what you would feel on a lower end machine with NVIDIA Reflex Off. Let's see how some of our favorite creators performed. Hey, bring it on 85. Oh no. Oh my goodness, this feels so bad. I feel like someone poured mud on my mouse pad and I'm dragging through it. You can still snap, but obviously between each snap you have to hold afterwards just to make sure, just for your eyes to catch up and go, yep, you're definitely on target. Oh no, this is the 85. This is disgusting. This is so difficult. Playing like this is impossible. That was actually so much harder than I thought it would be. Next, let's see how they did at 55 milliseconds. 55 milliseconds is similar to what you would feel on a lower end machine with reflex on. Okay, 55 milliseconds. Feeling a bit faster. I'm still missing shots though. Still having to readjust constantly. Is it nearly as bad as the 85, but you can still really feel a difference? Oh my gosh, I cannot hit these. It definitely feels better than the other one before, but I can't tell if it's like that much better. These are static targets that are popping up. Like playing any first person shooter that I specialize in would feel awful in some of these settings. Finally, 25 milliseconds. 25 milliseconds is what you would feel on a higher end machine with a high hertz display and reflex on. Straight to 25, let's go. I feel like I'm going really fast. It's like night and day, oh my God. Certainly feels a lot smoother. I'm taking a lot less time between moving. I'm definitely more consistent. This feels so good. It feels so precise. I was something, I was something indeed. Now let's take a look at the results. These include the scores from not only the creators, but also the tens of thousands of gamers who took the challenge. We broke down these results by two different aiming tasks, latency frenzy and latency flicking. Latency frenzy was an exercise in speed aiming and pre-planning. This is a helpful skill when quickly changing targets in a first person shooter. Latency flicking on the other hand, was an exercise in reactions and precision. Flicking is a critical skill in tactical shooters like CSGO and Valorant, or when using a sniper. In Latency Frenzy, creators improved by 12%, going from 85 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds, and 23% going from 85 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds. And gamers improved by 15%, going from 85 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds, and 24% going from 85 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds. In latency flicking, creators improved by 32% going from 85 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds, and 77% going from 85 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds. Gamers improved by 45% going from 85 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds, and 96% going from 85 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds. Incredible. That's almost 2x better at flicking just by reducing system latency. What's even more fascinating is the bell curve, something we haven't been able to analyze before the system latency challenge. The chart is color graded going from red, scores in the lower percentile, to green, scores in the higher percentile. If we compare the percentile markers at 85 milliseconds, 55 milliseconds, and 25 milliseconds, each percentile shifts to the right as latency decreases. This shows that everyone's scores improved with lower latency. Second, lower latency unlocks player potential. Not only did the curve shift towards higher scores, the range of achieved scores increased. At 85 milliseconds, players score between zero and 35 points. At 55 milliseconds, players score between zero and 41 points. And at 25 milliseconds, players score between zero and 55 points. This shows that as latency decreases, a wider range of scores becomes possible. Finally, lower latency can make difficult aiming tasks possible. In latency flicking, we saw that 7.5% of players couldn't hit a single shot at 85 milliseconds. However, at 25 milliseconds, 
only 4% couldn't hit a shot. If we look at the top 10% of aimers that played latency flicking, the increase in average score from 85 milliseconds to 55 milliseconds was 46%, and from 85 milliseconds to 25 milliseconds was 103%. That's over a 2x improvement. This shows that muscle memory is not enough to overcome the impacts of system latency. High skilled players depend even more on lower latency inputs to score their best. With the results from tens of thousands of gamers who participated, it's clear that system latency has an incredible impact on gamers' ability to aim. This isn't to say that skilled players can't aim well at high latency. As the data shows, they can't. But if they had lower latency, they could have scored even better. Reducing system latency is critical for competitive gamers regardless of skill level. If you play a game with NVIDIA Reflex, be sure to turn it on so you can play your very best.